on this episode. Today is gonna be more of a chill out episode, but this turns out to be a lie as Christian gets more mm, and more oh, excited. Oh yeah. Oh man, now it feels like I'm firing some gun. Mm, hi everybody, welcome to Lazy Desk Academy. Welcome to the Shmup tutorial. I'm gonna load Shmup. I'm gonna run this. Isn't it beautiful? We have a ship. We can move it left and right. Perfection. Okay, so um, off the bat, I want to do one thing uh, that is kind of new here now in this tutorial. Um, and each episode, because people get, you know, start experimenting and maybe break the code and, and uh, get off track and they want to, you know, it's going to start recording new episode and, you know, your code might be completely different from my code. So in cases where you kind of like get off rails and so forth, you can get back on the rails by I will always provide the code uh, at the beginning of the episode down in the doobly-doo. So you can always like, you know, um, uh, there's gonna be a link there. You can download the P8 file, shmup P8. You can always download it from there. There's also gonna be a GitHub. If you don't know what GitHub is, uh, maybe you better don't touch it. We have people starting to download things from GitHub and oh, that didn't go so well. But yeah, if you're into GitHub, there's also gonna be a GitHub where each episode is gonna be a separate commit. Right, so what are we going to do today? Well, we're gonna expand on the things that happened before. Now we can control things with, uh, with, a, with, a, with a keyboard. Um, so we maybe want to make more things happen on the screen. Generally today is gonna to be more of a chill out episode because we went through some tremendous changes in on the previous episode and I just want to kind of like play around with the tools we already have and see what else we can do, okay? Just like just like get more familiar, more comfortable with the tools that we have. On the last episode, we had if statements, which are, I mean, again, they're kind of like English language, you know, like if something happens then and then so forth, you know, I, we talked about how it's kind of like a train, like a train switch where train goes down one track or the other track, depending on, you know, some kind of condition. Uh, we use this if statement um, uh, in conjunction with this weird BTN function that we had, uh, that uh, is true, that kind of like is true uh, on frames in which a button is pressed. Uh, and we use this to control a variable that controls the speed of our ship. And then uh, down here, we, uh, we actually also use some other if statements to make sure that the ship actually stays on the screen. Uh, by the way, here's another uh, one of the challenges that we had, like what what happens, how can we make it so that, for example, it loops through, like if it doesn't just hit the edge, but actually loops through. That's actually quite easy to do uh, here and, and this this year, you can just, instead of resetting it to 120, you can set it to zero. And then here, instead of setting it to zero, we set it to 120, we just switch the two values around. And bam, we're looping through, isn't that cool? Isn't, isn't that, Nice how quickly how quickly we can pull this off. That's that's really nice. And actually at this point I also want to implement the other thing that actually um, was challenged in the previous episode in Doggy Zone. I actually want to make um, the vertical movement as well. So follow me along if you if it will strike we're struggling with this. Now this is actually the point where I want to actually use better variable names. I love I love my Harry. I, I, Harry, I love you. But Harry is 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 not a good variable name. It doesn't. I I, I don't. I won't always talk about Harry. We don't talk about Harry. We don't talk about Harry. Um, we want to change this into maybe something that's more meaningful, as actually representing the thing that it does. Because actually, what Harry does is the position of the of our ship. So why don't we just call this ship X? It's a better variable name, right? It just it just tells us what what's what this is and actually um should we call it, yeah let's call this ship speed as well ship speed is maybe a bit uh maybe a bit long um and maybe a ship spd ship spd and ship x um, now that we changed the variable names here we have to change them everywhere in the program so you <laughs> 
<laughs> this this should be a lesson for us to pick good variable names from from get go. Uh, so yeah, let's do that real quick. Okay, I think this is it. Let's see if there's any bugs. That's that's always how you know if you if you made, if you made any mistakes, you will see any bugs. Okay, good. We're moving the ship back uh, ship left and right. That's good. Now we want to move it up and down, as I said. And again, we're gonna have to invent a new variable because now something else about the ship changes. So we're gonna go ship y. By the way, this is kind of like a this is kind of a bit of a cheat. Every time I, I, I ask how to do something, it usually involves creating a variable, something where it has to change, right? You have to animate something and that's, there's a, probably a, some kind of variable attached. So whenever I give you some kind of task, probably there's going to be a variable. You have to create a variable. So, so ship X, the X position of this ship, ship Y, and the Y position of the ship. Now I'm going to go here, draw function, and I'm going to make sure that ship y is where we actually drawing the sprite so now actually the sprite is controlled by ship x and ship y by the two variables uh, i set ship x and ship y to 64 and that is the center of the screen um now here we're moving the ship we're actually going to copy this line and paste it in and we're just going to change it to uh to y and immediately Immediately, I, I ran into problems. Obviously, oh man. See how we have ship speed, but ship speed is actually, you know, sideways moving speed, but we actually kind of have to a different, we have, we, have a, we have to have a different speed. So again, we have to change the variable name. So I'm gonna call this ship SX and ship SY. I'm going to set it both to zero. Sx is the x speed, the horizontal speed, and Sy is the vertical speed. We kind of have to have two speed variables because we can move up and down and left and right independently of each other. We can also go diagonally, right? So we kind of have to have two variables here. <clears throat> okay. Again, going back through the code here and changing ship speed to ship Sx. Okay, that's it. And now here, when we do the math, where we actually moving the Y. So as I said, you know, we're gonna basically have to copy this line where we're moving the ship, this this variable, we're gonna go, go ship X equals ship X, whatever was in ship X plus ship SX, the speed of ship. Uh, we're gonna have to apply this to the Y coordinates as well. So we're gonna go ship Y equals ship Y, whatever was in ship Y plus ship speed Y. Okay, I'm gonna run this. And as you can see, nothing happens. We cannot change uh, up and down because obviously this is now where we have to do it, actually check the button presses, right? And then again, we're gonna go into our cheat sheet now. Right, in the cheat sheet, are we seeing that up is two and down is three. So what we're gonna do is adjust if statements like the same type that we had before. We're gonna go if btn two is pressed, then, ship speed y equals now moving up is negative like this is kind of like where if if if, if something is moving up on the screen uh it gets smaller the number gets smaller because the top edge of the screen that's zero and the lower edge of the screen is is 128 127. so if something goes towards the uh, the uh, upper edge of the screen, then it, it has to get smaller. It kind of has to, the number has to re get reduced. So we're gonna go minus two here. Now three was, uh, was pressing down. So we're gonna go if btn three, then, and again, ship speed y equals two, because going down, means that the Y position gets bigger because the lower edge of the screen is really like 128. So we kind of have to increase the, uh, the position of the screen, of the, uh, of our spaceship. Okay, okay, I'm gonna run this. And yes, we can now move our beautiful spaceship around. I love this. Mm. Oh, 
Okay. Uh, <laughs> I see immediately the problem. The ship keeps on moving uh, the, no matter what we do. And that's because here at the beginning, we are resetting uh, at the beginning of the update function, we reset the speed to zero. Uh, so I'm going to just uh, reset the speed to zero for the Y uh, speed as well. So we set resetting the X speed to zero, but we also have to uh, reset the Y speed, the vertical speed as well. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. We are now controlling the ship. It's beautiful. I love it so much. Mm, mm, mwah, perfection. Okay, we just duplicated everything, right? We just like duplicated the variable that controls the position and we plugged it in here. And we duplicated the speed. We have now a second speed variable. And like every every line we had, we basically have like a second copy of it, except from where we're hitting the edge because we can actually fly off the upper and lower edge right now. That's okay, that's okay. We're gonna fix this later. Okay, so what is important when, uh, with shmups? What is the most important thing that you do in a shmup? Well, you press a button and you shoot. So let's shoot something. How are we going to do this? Well, again, we're gonna look at a cheat sheet and there's two action buttons. There's this, um, it's, it's supposed to be a circle. I know it's a square, but it's supposed to be a circle. And then there's the X, four and five. Um, I think we, we arrived at a kind of like a, the same problem that, that we have like a lot of like Japanese situations where like on a, on a, on a PlayStation, they, they use the circles to confirm an X as, as uh, like circle is yes and X is no. Uh, but actually in the West, we switched this around at some point for I don't know what reason. And there was always this confusion. Now, today, I think this, this confusion is gone. Um, I like to use, because that's how it's always mapped on the, on the portable devices. Um, I kind of like using the circle as the action, but as the, as the main action button these days. Uh, previously, I always used the, the X as the main action button because that's actually mapped to the X on the keyboard. And that's actually easier to find if somebody plays the game on PC. It's up to you. Let's just use the X for now. Let's just use the, the, the five. We're going to trigger shooting by pressing the button number five. All right. So, and you can immediately see the kind of like the problem that we're having, like this, this, this update function is getting really, really long and the draw function is really, really short. And it's like, you have to scroll a lot. And it's like a lot of things, we're doing a lot of very different things in the update function. We are doing some controls, then we're moving the ship and then we check into ship controls, hits the, the edge. Like there's suddenly, there's like multiple things that we're doing in update function. So we can already maybe think about, maybe it makes sense to kind of like, uh, you know, uh, cluster them a little bit, but that's maybe something that will, will come in the next episode. For now, let us do here in this cluster here where we are uh, changing the speed of the ship depending on what button you press. Let us do another if statement if btn uh, five. Then. But now again, now we have to shoot a bullet. How do we shoot a bullet? Well, first of all, we need a bullet. So let's draw a bullet. Finished. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bullet. <laughs> that, was, that wasn't very difficult, right? I'm, th th this actually has a point. We're going to discuss in a second. Okay, so the bullet is sprite number two. So let's just draw a bullet to the screen. Uh, here, a draw function. Let's just draw a bullet. SPR two. And we're just going to draw it like, I don't know, uh, 6440. Just, I want to see the bullet on the screen. There it is. There's the bullet. So what we want to do is like, if we press a button, we want the bullet to appear and start moving upwards. We kind of did that already, right? We kind of did that in episode two. We kind of had like our ship and that was moving sideways. And we kind of have to make the same thing again. We kind of have to make a bullet appear on the screen and we it, it, it's just supposed to go upwards on its own. So, huh, okay. So, right. Right now we are, we have two variables that control the position of the speed of the ship. We are just going to have to create two variables that control the position of a bullet. Just let's just go there. Let's go, go ball X equals 64 ball Y equals 40. Let's go 40. And then we're going to 
plug them into the draw function. In the draw function, this is our bullet, right? Uh, we're going to plug them bull x and bull y. Now the position of the bullet is controlled by variables, but alas, the variables are not changing. They're, they're stationary, right? So we want to make the bullet go up, right? So why don't we just, same way when we're moving the ship, we're just going to move the bullet. Move the bullet. Bull y equals bull y minus 2. Now, with a ship, we are actually using a variable to control the speed, but with a ship, you know, ship moves back and forth. The bullet will always go up. The bullet won't turn around, come back down, hopefully not, right? So it's kind of fine at this point to just set it to minus 2, but maybe we're going to change this a little bit later. But, but it's fine, right? Let's just see what happens. Ah, okay. Okay. Good. The bullet went away. <laughs> I mean, it's not good, but it's 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 what kind of what we wanted. But now it flies away, and and we want to press a button for for it to to do that, right? Like, how do we do this? How how do we make the bullet appear? Well, we have to just put it on the same position that the ship is on when we press the button. Just let's just do that. So we're gonna go ball y. equals ship y. We're just going to set reset the bullet to the same position that the ship is on. And we're going to do the same thing with the x position. We're going to go bull x equals ship x. That's it. We're going to save. We're going to run. I'm going to press a button. Bullet flies out of my ship. Now, funky things happen when you keep the button pressed. You can see that the bullet kind of is behind our ship. <laughs> hmm, that's weird. Okay. Uh, but yeah, if you press the button once, you can see the bullet kind of flies out of the ship. It, I kind of wanted to maybe appear a bit higher because right now it kind of like appears on the hood, on the on the on the nose of the ship. I want to maybe appear in front of the ship. So that's something we're gonna work on. Um, I guess don't like how when you keep the, the button pressed, the bullet follows the ship, and there's there's an easy fix for that. There's actually two functions that check if a button is pressed, and it's actually on a cheat sheet. Again, the cheat sheet here, and if you go into this corner, right, you have BTN, that's the one that we're using, but there's also BTNP. BTNP. Yeah, BTNP is just... BTN is true on every frame in which the button is pressed. As long as you keep the button pressed, BTN will deliver true, will be true. BTN P is only true on the first frame, on the first frame that you press a button. So you can trigger something and you can't trigger it again and until you release the button and press it again. So that's what we can do here. We can set it to BTN P. Five. So now, if I press a button, if I hold it, <laughs> it will, okay, it will go into like a cycle state, but it kind of feels a bit better here, I feel. Uh, now, eventually I want to, obviously, this is a bit of a problem here. Um, we can only fire a bullet and if, we, if the bullet is still going, then it will just get reset at the beginning. We, mm, that's, that's not ideal, obviously. We're gonna work on that, and uh, that's actually gonna be difficult a little bit, and it's gonna be you know like in two or three episodes where we can actually pull this off. But so far we have a bullet. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now actually I wanted to discuss something else with a bullet. I want to tweak this bullet so it's kind of nice, and so it kind of feels more of a like a schmuck bullet because right now it's it's not that great. And there's a lot of things that we can improve about this bullet. First of all, as I said, it would be nice if it wouldn't appear on the nose of the ship, it would appear in front of the ship. How can we do that? Well, here, for example, in this in these equations where we're actually resetting the bullet to a certain position, we can actually add or subtract some number. We can add some math here. We can do a little bit of equation. So, for example, here, when we're setting the bullet po y position to the ship y position, we can move it a little bit higher. We can say minus 2, minus 3, actually. Bam. 
Now it looks a lot better. Now it feels like the bullet is flying out of the ship and not like spawning on top of the ship. That's good. You know what the problem is with this? What the real problem is with this? There is no sound. It doesn't make the pew pew, pew pew pew. So like it's, it, it doesn't have the oomph. So let's just make a sound. That's actually a new feature, something that we haven't done before. Uh, so we're not gonna go to the sprite vampire this time around. We're gonna go to this here, to this horn, the, the horn of sound. And something you can do here is you can draw something like this. And if you press space, you will hear it. We are actually, this is actually a melody. Uh, with, if you, here is the speed at which this, this melody is being played and it's luckily it defaults to one, but if you press the left button and the number goes up. Beautiful melody. I'm gonna actually have to tone down the volume, volume a little bit here, okay. I love it. It's 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 the best music in the world, but alas, we don't want music. Uh, we want sound effects. And for sound effects, you want to. It's a bit confusing because the higher the number, the lower the speed is. It's kind of like the de delay in between the different notes. So if the number goes down, this the and you can make it go down with the right mouse button, and you can make it go up with the left mouse button. So if that number is smaller, then the sound is being played faster, and if the number is uh, higher, then there's more delay between the individual notes, so the entire thing feels more like a melody. And then this is actually something that that um, we're going to use for both for melody and for sound effects. Uh, and uh, the blocks that we've drawn here so beautifully, these are just like the notes. And the higher the thing, the, it's like, for example, let's just draw like something like this. That's actually already feeling more of a like a like laser sound, but you can see like this is a very high note and then this is a very, very low note, right? So yeah, so now you can draw some things. That kind of sounds nice. Now, if you don't want any note to be played, this here, these these value sliders here, they're actually uh, define the volume of each individual note, right? And if we set the volume to zero, there you see the notes disappear. The columns are no longer there because we reset the volume of those notes to zero. So only these notes no, no, at the beginning are audible. That sounds like a laser sound to me. That's how it works. You start high and go down. That sounds good, that sounds good. Oh, uh, something that I wanted to end mention as well, something you can do here as well, is you can um, use a different instrument, so to speak. So we used the red instrument, but you can use also this instrument. These are different waveforms, but you can think of them as instruments. So the orange one sounds like this. This is the yellow one, a bit more harsh. Uh, then you have the green one different type of harsh <laughs> you have the blue one mm -hmm. and this organ this this um uh, gray one i feel this is the very very melodic one a very soft one uh this pink one is special that's actually kind of noise so it's often used for explosions and then you have again like this this um peach colored one that sounds like this. Again, very classic. I'm actually going to use the melodic one. It's a uh, it's a laser sound to me. Now uh, it's kind of like we have the same situation as with the uh, with the sprite vampire, where you know you have, we have we can create a lot of sprites. So there's like a whole bank, like a whole collection, a sprite sheet of sprites. Well, we have the same things with sounds. There's multiple sounds we can create, obviously, and you can switch between different sounds by pressing these buttons. We just created sound zero. That's this sound, but we can have more sounds. Sixty-four sounds in total. There's some more stuff that is here. I haven't explained this stuff. I haven't explained this. You can also switch this entire editor into a different mode, which is this, which is actually listing the individual notes. So if you're musically inclined, you can edit the individual notes. And you can actually add some effects to it. We're not gonna go there yet. 
we're going to keep this in this mode, this button here, which is showing us this. This allows us to draw sound effects and that's okay for now. Okay, so our goal now is to play sound effect number zero. Let's do this. So here in this situation where we're pressing a button and we're firing the bullet, we're just going to say SFX sound effect, open parentheses, zero, close parentheses. That's it. That's all there is to it. Ah, oh, yeah, baby. Ah, oh, yeah. Let's go. <laughs> oh, man. Isn't that already? Isn't that already like a shooter or something? I don't even know what life is anymore. This is amazing. Good. Now, this episode is actually almost over. I kind of want to make, make this a bit of a shorter episode. Uh, we did a lot of changes to the movement and so forth. But actually, I wanted to... Um, I wanted to uh, have a bit of a game design talk. You know, this these first episodes are about, you know, just getting our feet wet, about getting stuff started, understanding some basics. Uh, I didn't want to talk too much about, you know, what's good design, bad game design, and kind of stuff, stuff, you know, how to improve the, the game, your game, how to improve the feel of your game. I didn't want to get too much into this. I didn't want to be too much of a fun police right now. I just want us to experiment and, have, have, and enjoy it ourselves. But actually, this might be a good place to start experimenting a bit. This is something that is actually a lot of, um, I, I see a lot of shooters, a lot of people who made shooters actually struggle with a little bit, not quite, not quite um, connecting. That, how do I put it? This is a shooting game, right? This is a game where we shoot. And in a shooting game, the main verb is shooting. We're shooting stuff. In order for the game to be more fun and enjoyable, the shooting should be more fun and enjoyable. It should be fun to shoot things. Now, what kind of, how do we make, like go inside of you and think about, imagine what kind of thing would be fun to shoot. Uh, think about what size of a thing is fun to shoot. Is it fun to shoot a small thing? Pew, pew, pew. Is that fun? Or is it fun to shoot like a gigantic bazooka, right? I think we all know what the idea is. Like these, these are um, uh, the idea that shoot, you know, shooting some kind of like amazing um, weapon is more enjoyable and fun. It's more action. It's more you know more happening. This is this is more enjoyable inherently, kind of like more enjoyable than shooting something there where not a lot of things happen. Um, I think a lot of people kind of like a lot of game developers kind of like pick some a shot like this because it's realistic right <laughs> like if what if this was a spaceship if this was like an airplane the bullets would be tiny compared to the size of the ship right and that's true it's realistic but it, it's not about realism here it's about how something feels like if you if you I, I assume if you fire you know a gun in real life it feels enormous gigantic right and so here uh, the idea here is that we also want to fire something as gigantic and enormous we want to convey this idea this is a very long preface just to get to the point and I think that I think bullets should be big I think if you want to, I want you to experiment with big bullets. I want to, see, I want you to try how big you can make a bullet. All right? I want you to try a bigger bullet. This, this is what I'm, I'm trying to say. I want to try big, bigger bullets. If you made bullets that are so small, what about if this is the bullet? Oh yeah! Immediately, I can feel like yeah. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. No. This, this, this is, this is the right size. But what if you can make the bullet even bigger? We can make them as big as we want. This is our our world. We, we dare to dream bigger, you know, as they say in in Inception. We can make the bullets as, as big as we want because it's fun. You know, it's like a fantasy kind of world. Can, yeah, we can make the bullet as big as the ship. Why not? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Now it feels like I'm firing some kind of like gigantic laser. That's good. How else are we going to make things more fun? We already have the sound effect that's already actually adding a lot. We can tweak the sound effect, you know, we can maybe try to make it a bit more pitchy. Like something like, ah, maybe a bit, maybe something like this. You know, you can experiment with sound effect, maybe longer. Maybe that's better, you know. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. What else can we do to make this fun? How about making the bullet go faster? Because right now it's going a bit slow. How about we make it go faster? Now, right now it's going at the speed of two. That's actually the speed of our ship. We can actually, you know, follow along the bullet. That's not, that's not a very fast bullet. How about we make it twice as fast? Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, you know. Now we're cooking, now we're cooking. That's what uh, something I want you to do. I want you to uh, experiment a little bit, have a little bit more fun. And actually, this is where we're going to get to the doggy zone. This is where we are at the end of the episode. And now I will give you some tasks for you to experiment with a little bit. And this is a perfect task to experiment with. We have like this little, this little laboratory, right? So this is perfect now. How about you experiment with different bullets? create different sprites for different different shots and see what works and what doesn't work. Maybe you make long bullets, maybe you make horizontal bullets. Maybe you can figure out how to fire two bullets. Maybe you can figure this out, to do some experiments in this regard. Um, there's two buttons. Maybe you can fire different bullets when you press different buttons. I want you to just have fun, experiment a little bit, at least make, you know, three different shots that feel different. Go small. Try like, actually go there and try to make it. What if the sprite actually has multiple bullets on it, right? And what if there's like because you don't have to, like, you have to, you can do something like this, right? What happens then? Just see what happens, and and create multiple designs, and pick the bullet that you personally like. Try different sound effects. Go wild a little bit. Have fun a little bit. Pick a shot that you like. And also this is the part where I will say thank you to the good people of coffee who made this show possible. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my supporters on Coffee. Thank you so much for your support. And if you aren't a supporter yet, consider a sub or a one-time donation over at Coffee. One of the major perks is that you'll gain access to new episodes of this series earlier, so there is no need to wait. And there's also all sorts of other behind-the-scenes features. Check it out at coffee.com slash lazydevs. All right, so this was episode number four. We are shooting bullets. Things are progressing well. On the next episode, Something I want to do is I want to get a little bit into animation. I want to start changing sprites. I want to add more, you know, more stuff to this ship. But that's something that's happening on the next episode. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.